Today I'm going to show you the perspective tools in Affinity Photo. Hello my friends and let's get started. So the first thing you want to do when using a perspective tool is select the layer that you want to edit. Make sure it's in pixel, not as an image layer. And a good idea is to duplicate this layer because the perspective tool is destructive. So you can't really go back from there. Uh, you can undo it, but it's better to make a copy from the original file. So we have a copied layer now and we will click over here on the left to perspective tool where we have single plane. You can see it's just a single grid and we have dual plane. So we will look at dual plane first and dual plane has two modes. One is the source mode and the other one is the destination mode. The source mode allows us to set the two points in the middle to the correct position for the perspective. We don't need to touch the outer points. It doesn't have, the grid doesn't have to fit the building. It's a bit strange, it's a bit counterintuitive, um, but this is how it works in Affinity Photo. So let's just set the points along the edge of our building. You can zoom in and out by holding control and using your mouse wheel. There we go. And now if we switch to the destination mode, you can see that the software is straightening out the line in the middle and we get a little bit of a clipping error down here that we will fix in a second. But what we can do right now because we are in destination mode is that we can use these two points to click and drag them and move the building around to find a new perspective that me, we might like more in the picture. So I will go maybe with this so it's a bit more dramatic. There we go. And now I can zoom in to correct our problem down here with the clipping. And now we will touch the outer point. So I will take this point and move it around. And it moves very strangely. Um, so you have to get used to it a little bit, but um, it's not too hard. Uh, let's see, this looks good. Yeah, this is okay. So let's click on apply. There we go. By the way, what you see here is this other clipping is the original layer from the background. So actually here, this part is empty from the picture. Uh, but you can see now that we have a completely new perspective in the picture. Let's compare this. This was the original building and this is the new building that we have created with the new perspective. So this is a really, really interesting tool that you can use as a change from a perspective with two points or two planes to rearrange the perspective in the picture. Okay, the second thing that we are going to look at is single plane perspective, which you can use in two different ways and is also very, very interesting. Um, let's make a text, call it test. And now when you click on the perspective tool, keep in mind that this will change the text layer into a pixel layer. So you can't change the text afterwards. Now we click on this and we can zoom in with the mouse wheel. And now what you can do as the first and I think most used application of this single plane is to just stretch the text into the perspective of the building to make it look like it's on top or on the side of the building. I'm not going to work with the shadow or the light situation right now. I'm just going to show you how the perspective tool works. You can, by the way, you can always click here on show grid, disable that so you hide the grid and have a better view of what is going on in the picture. And you can see that this really nicely puts the text on the front of the building. So this is a very easy way to use this. Another way, and this is the third way I'm going to show you for a perspective tool. Let's delete this and click on the source layer here is that you can go up here to layers and here it says live projection and you have a perspective projection. So let's click on this and again we get a grid and now we will adjust all of the four points to fit the building and this will create for us a 2D flat projection of the surface which is a really interesting tool. It's kind of limited. I would wish it to be a lot better than it is, but it's still a good tool and you can be really creative with that. 
So let's prepare this really quickly. There we go. Over here, last point. There we go. Very nice. Okay. Now the only thing you have to do is click up here onto your move tool and it will turn the side of the building into a 2D flat picture, which is very nice. You could use this uh, with your clone brush to move things around, to copy things inside of this layer. You can also use, of course, your normal paint brush to just paint onto the surface. Let's just make a circle and maybe also a box. There we go. So you can just see the effect um, that it's having onto the picture. To control what you're doing, you can click again on the move tool and click on edit live projection. So you see a preview of what is going on. There you go. And if you are happy with your result, you can go up here onto layer, live pro pro uh, projection and click on remove projection. And this will render what you have done before into the picture and onto the plane in a perspectively correct fashion. The problem that I have with this thing is that it is not like the smart layers in Photoshop. So you can't use any other layers and you can't combine any layers into this perspective projection. The only thing you can do is manipulate um, pixels on that layer, which is very limited. Um, you can't even put text on there because it will not be put into the perspective afterwards. The only way you could be uh, use text on here is to make a outline selection and then paint the pixels onto the layer. So it's a kind of not so good solution, but still a very nice tool. So there is now another way to use perspective tool. For this, I have another picture and you can see here it's a nice photograph of a room, but we have the problems that the lines are in perspective. So they get smaller, the higher the building goes, the higher the room goes, but we want to have straight lines in the picture. So again, we go and select the layer and the first thing you want to do is make some guidelines. So just um, make your ruler on the outside visible, go to view. And here it says show rulers. So this is important that you have it on show rulers and you make some guidelines to help you along and set them roughly where um, the start is or the lower part is of um, the line that you want to correct. So I set one here and I will set another one here and I will set another one here. There we go. And now I click again on the perspective tool. So we get this grid here. You can hide the grid, like I said, if you want to. There we go. And now I will take the upper two points and move them outwards and maybe also take the lower ones and move them inwards until the lines are straight in a fashion that I want to have in my picture. You see, I will try to use this guideline to show me where this will be straight, when this will be straight, you know, and the other one here too. And of course, over here, we have another one. So we, you have to go a little bit back and forth until you actually get the result that you want. Because if you move this, of course, the rest of the picture also moves. So it's a little bit of a fight between the two sides in a sense of correcting the perspective. There we go. But we are getting along nicely here. Let's see, move this out a little bit more. And now we have to correct this one again on this side. There we go. Um, this looks pretty okay. I believe the lower part in a little bit. And you can see we're getting really close to a good result. There we go. The left side looks good. Of course, you lose a little bit from the picture down here and down here, uh, but you can use the in paint brush maybe to adjust this. So I think for now this looks good enough to give you the idea of how this works. We can now also remove our guidelines and you can see that we have a lot of straight lines now in the picture and it looks a lot nicer than before. Let's use the in paint brush a little bit to see if we can correct um, the errors that we have down here or if we just, oh, okay, this works pretty good. If we cut it away, which is also an option. Oh, okay, this didn't work too good. Let's see, nope, nope. 
Okay, let's try this side here. The in paint brush is not always the best solution, I've got to say. It could be better and sometimes, but you can see here, it also sometimes gives you pretty good um, solutions for that. And again, we can also use our cutting tool to cut away a little bit of the parts that are that didn't work out too well for us. So let's make it like this. Okay, and there we go. We have a picture with straight lines. Again, let's pull in our help lines and you can see these are pretty straight. This is pretty straight. The one back here is also pretty straight and the one over here is also pretty straight. So we have changed the picture a lot in the way it's looking, it's looking a lot more stable. Okay, so these are the different uses of perspective tools, or better said, an intro to the uses of perspective tools. Thank you for watching. I hope you like my videos. I make a new video every three days, so subscribe if you like my content. And if you want to support me even more, head over to Patreon and check out my different rewards, um, like my original files with all the layers. You can live chat with me and I will give you feedback on your works. Okay, see you soon and have a nice day. Bye.